Welcome, welcome. Alrighty. Let's roll. <clears throat> so, if you couldn't tell by the sounds of the disk drive, this is a Dreamcast game. Good start. Uh, this is made by Atlas, the same people who made Shin Megami Tensei, so if the looks and sounds seem familiar, that's probably why. I'm also playing on the Japanese version. The run that I'm comparing against was done on the English version. There are some minor differences that I'll go over. Uh, But it's not really important until much later on. Bye. There are also lots of cutscenes that you can only skip line by line as there's dialogue, so... That's okay. Gives time to explain things. So if you don't already know this whole story, uh, first of all there's a chat command if you type exclamation bounty, but uh, I'm trying to beat a 10 year old world record set by the serious Kako demon. There's a, a $20 bounty on it, so high stakes here. I'll get used to him. <laughs> we'll beat him up, but uh, we'll still be seeing a lot of him. So this girl in red, her name is Kay. She's pretty much the main character. We'll be playing as her for the first stage. Yeah, he's extra dead. Alrighty. So. This is what actually playing the game looks like. It's a first person hack and slash. Uh, with tank controls. And the cornering is very, very bad. Uh, for the most part, if you're not going straight, you're slowing down. So you have to take corners really, really slowly. Uh, also, jumping over enemies is generally the best way to get around. There's no reason to fight most things. You can see there's an EX meter at the top. You can charge that up. I'll be using it in this room to kill an enemy. You hold down the button to charge that, and you'll do like a special powerful attack. In the English version, that costs a tiny bit of health to use. Uh, that message at the bottom just says that I need to clear all the enemies to advance. But yeah, uh, it costs health to use. 
here it is. In the English version. Much like a like a beat em up special move. But in the Japanese version you can use it with no cost. Those guys can just rollerblade around the room and not let you attack them, so that was pretty fast. Snake Dude is the first boss. Easy. So, there's another mechanic to this game that I didn't, didn't already talk about, uh, called brainjacking. The idea is that we don't actually play as K, we play as the sword named Makin, which was created in this lab, and it brainjacks other people. So, what you're supposed to do is go throughout the game and just, like use a bunch of different characters, and it's pretty neat. The sword like morphs to be different to suit the character. If you saw the thing that said rank up in the upper right corner of the screen, that's your brain jack rank. So the higher rank you are, the more powerful characters you can use essentially. And it's like experience in an RPG. You uh, you can get pickups that have like a yin yang symbol to increase your rank. Or just killing enemies, or killing enemies that have that then drop uh, those power ups. But um, no matter what, you play the first stage as K, and then in a second we will brainjack the boss that we just fought, and then we'll be playing as him. Uh, that was a dialogue choice. There are several of those throughout the game. Again, like Mega Ten. You have a lot of choices that are sort of like alignment choices that determine what stages you end up playing and what ending you get. So it's pretty neat, but uh, unfortunately you won't really understand what the choices are since it's Japanese. This is us brainjacking that boss that we just fought. So you'll see the perspective shift from K's to his. Geist, that's funny. Okay, so you can see this weapon has like the red markings on it still. That's like the calling card, so you know that it's mocking. Uh, <laughs> that's really funny that it's called Geist because the big bad of this game is named Geist. If you see the bottom of the splits there. So that's us now, taking a plane.
somehow Kay manages to stick around though for bizarre plot reasons. Unfortunately, the beginning here is pretty heavy on cutscenes, but it gets better over the course of the run. Especially, like, the whole middle section is just non-stop action. So, uh, <laughs> if you didn't get enough of Creepy Snake Guy's tongue, then you're in luck. We get to see it at the bottom of the screen for a long time to come. accidentally clipped out of bounds in this elevator, and I have no idea how it happened. I wish I had captured it, but I didn't. Yeah, it took me a while to figure out that it was actually his tongue as well. <laughs> Very threatening boss. Alright. Taken care of. That was actually pretty bad. Okay, so this guy on the ground is the first optional brain jacket of the game. He's a pilot. And, um,. They kind of want you to uh, to brainjack him, and then since you're a pilot, you can fly this thing properly and go to uh, where you were headed. But we just run past him. <laughs> it's really incredible. Uh, we just ignore him and take the thing anyway with a character who doesn't know how to fly and we end up crash landing closer to where we want to be in the long run so it's really dumb but I'm okay with it especially because playing as the pilot is garbage he has like this nightstick that does no damage runs real slow he's terrible this character that we're using actually has a really really high run speed so it's handy. He has a high run speed and a high jump, which are probably the two most important stats. I think the only stats that your characters have are um, power, speed, Defense, either defense or life, and jump height.
Okay. So India is my least favorite level in the game. But hopefully it won't take too long. It starts off with like a demonstration of what you'll be doing the whole time. You have to lure enemies onto these switches to open up doors. Like so. out that the controls in this game are not very good. <laughs> um, even if you want to just do the basic like three-hit combo, half the time it just doesn't work. That's bad. That's very bad. I'm gonna have to make another trip. Yeah, so that guy falls. Oh no! <laughs> I'm gonna be super behind here, but oh well. So you saw me jumping over enemies there. Uh, if you use lock-on and just jump towards an enemy, then it'll give you like a different jump arc entirely so that you can go straight over them. And then if you hit an enemy in their back, with any enemy in the game, you get a critical. And I think crits do double damage. You don't always want crits. Uh, there are some times when it's actually bad, but hopefully that won't happen. Here is something along the lines of we need to prevent World War Three because China question mark. There's also the big bad named Geist, who uh, also has the power to brain jack, and apparently that makes him extremely dangerous, even though. It's okay for us to have that power. <laughs> and then again, like Megaton, uh, there are sort of factions that oppose the big beds but have different like philosophies of how to go about that. 
um, like the Blade Masters. This with the red helmet, that's Blade Master Kitty. I think she's like the leader of the Blade Masters. I don't remember the other faction's name, but the Mega Ten comparison would be like the Ring of Gaia. She's cool. You can play as several of the Blade Masters. After this level is where things get really interesting. Although at the very start of this level, admittedly, <laughs> I was really lazy. You have to wait for this truck to back up a certain amount before you can use it to jump onto this building where I just got shot from. But I didn't bother like timing how long I need to wait or anything. I just kind of wait until I know I can make the jump. If I were more serious about this game, then I would have found some sort of cue, like maybe how many rockets that, guy's fire, that guy fires. But as it stands, I don't need to worry about things that specific. After hitting this switch, you need to back up and go back around the truck. I used to do that by holding strafe and back jumping, and then once I got to the front of the truck, side jumping, and then walking straight forward. But normally you just get caught on one of these enemies, like that. And uh, you can't do a full height jump if you're not moving forward, or you're not facing forward, so... Or no, moving forward. So, I abandoned that strategy. This is a boss uh, that basically requires you to learn about crits. Paths open up to you. Three guesses where we're going. If you guess London, uh, congratulations. I don't know what you win. I didn't plan this far ahead. This stage has the first obvious time save over the previous run. In this room, they ran all the way around these terraces, uh, but you can just jump straight up. <laughs> so, Well, it's funny you say Germany. because we're about to mess up a Nazi robot. That's one of the things that was changed going over to the English version. Uh, they're not uh, swastikas anymore. This is a really easy stun lock. No problem. And then we run through like a sewer maze with exploding dogs. But it's pretty easy to land the way through.
Alrighty. This next stage is the biggest change, easily. I'm not gonna say anything, I'm just gonna go and hope that I get this quickly. There we go. Not perfect, but pretty fast. <laughs> so, this is why I was so confident I could get the record in just one stream. That's three minutes saved. So the whole deal with that stage is that the exit is right there at the beginning but it's closed behind a gate that you can't jump over normally and you're supposed to run into the building just beside it and press a switch to open it but then the way behind you closes and you have to run all the way around this big loop to make it back and exit the stage. What? Dude, somebody ban Nightbot, please. So, okay. That skip was something that I tried. I Since, like I said, I clipped into the elevator in the plane stage. I was trying to replicate that using one of the exploding dogs at the start of the stage. And so uh, I was like luring the dog over, jumping into it, trying to get pushed through or anything. And eventually I just flew straight over the gate. And, uh, <laughs> and it worked, kind of. So I played around with it a lot more. And what I ended up with uh, was it had nothing to do with being pushed through the gate. There's something along the lines of, if you take damage and jump at almost the same time, you can get like a double jump. That's that's the working theory. So I aggro uh, a machine gun enemy who's on a ledge up behind me, or up behind that gate, and get him to shoot me while I'm jumping up into the gate. And if I time it right, then... I get launched up and over, and I can exit the stage almost immediately. Alright, I'm gonna be lame and grab the health in here. Because I got clobbered by the grenades on that trolley ride. This guy tries to cheap shot you. He charges up his punch during the cutscene. He's a. That was the Moscow boss, by the way. He's just a normal enemy. And if you notice, we're not ranking up our Brain Jack rank at all. So, we're gradually becoming more and more underpowered as the game goes on. This is one of the bizarre version differences. In this room, there are two power-ups. There's a health up and an X. Uh, the X is just uh, like a strength up power-up. I can go and grab that because I have to wait for these trolleys anyway. That's the X. Uh, between the two versions, the only difference is that they're swapped. So, it really makes no difference. but you can see how much more powerful that X thing makes me.
I know, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I didn't realize it would do that. Wow, that hurt. So if this were the English version, I would be using that X power up two different times in the game, but uh, the second one that I would use just isn't there in the Japanese one. So it's a slight time loss. But it's worth it. So okay, every stage from this on, from there on out, uh, has a decent probability of killing me. Um, this upcoming stage is probably the scariest part in the game. Han, can you mod Fizzle? Do mods have the power to mod people? I think mods have uh, looser restrictions. By Nightbot. I'll fix that after after the stream. You can ban Fizzle. Can you type slash mod Fizzle? Okay, uh, this left path wouldn't show up if I didn't talk to that guy at the beginning of the last stage, so. That was why I needed to make that detour to talk to him, to go to the stage and to secure the ending that I want. Yeah, there's no mod button, but... Okay, right here, you jump down this bridge, and you see that health power-up up in the corner. There's, there's one power-up on each side of the bridge, uh, so it's like, if you want one, first of all you have to know that they're there, and then you have to make a choice which one you want, which is pretty cool. In the English one, there's a health power-up and an X, so you can choose whether you want health or strength. Uh, but in this one, it's uh, the Japanese one. You, uh, your choices are health or the brain jack up. So... Uh, the X would help us kill these three enemies slightly faster, but after the cutscene that plays after this, it would have worn off, so. Do not have permission. Well, dang. Okay, this fight is serious business. This is the main reason I chose Japanese. This next bit is uh, I have to fight two of those same enemies at the same time while the red dude is tossing grenades down at us. So I want to stay below this bridge in the center here so that his grenades don't hit me because you saw how much damage those do in the last stage. And once you kill one of these blue ladies, uh, the red dude will jump down and join you and then you can't avoid his grenades. At least not by standing under the bridge, so... This bit is... really scary. Okay. But now that we're down to just him, we're in the clear. 
So, the reason Japanese is better for this is just because you take less damage uh, from those blue enemies. I don't know if it's less damage in general, but it's at least less damage here. So I will absolutely take the consistency and the freedom to fight a little bit more aggressively over the X power up for the first wave of three. That was a pretty slow fight overall, but just making it through is good enough, honestly. And then I ended up on a somewhat lucky cycle here. You have to wait for the crates to move along for you to pass through each like, layer of these while there's bazookas being fired at you. They can also fire through the gaps here sometimes, so I'm not just strafing for nothing. There's no danger of dying in this level like from here on, but if the rockets hit you, it's kind of laggy, so may as well try to avoid getting hit. There's also no faster way than I know of, of getting through this room, unfortunately. You're super close to the, uh, the ceiling. You can't jump over these. You can deflect these projectiles, but there's no reason to. It takes a lot of hits to kill them, and it's a little bit laggy even when you do reflect them, so may as well just avoid them. And then when we're out... So yeah, uh, you can see, since I was able to be a lot more aggressive that time, or a lot more aggressive than the other run, I still save time. Uh, this guy in blue is our friend from the beginning. His name is Ko, and uh, he'll be important later on. More dialogue choices. This is also the only dialogue choice that you say no to. Uh, it's Blade Master Kitty asking you to defeat Geist. So you say no to that, but uh, somehow you end up fighting him in the end anyway? I don't know how it works out. I skip all the dialogue. <laughs> I tried to pay attention through like most of the game, but it... Eh. It's not the best story. <laughs> the dialogue choice that we said yes to was Cole asking us to visit Dr. Guinness, who's over here in Brazil. So that's what we're doing here. Hopefully I don't get clobbered by a grenade. Okay. We're very uh, under-leveled, or the equivalent, at this point, so most things will just destroy your world if they catch you. You can see like, those big red enemies are just becoming more and more frequent. And then once we get into these mine shafts across this bridge, uh, there will be a little sentry, like robot enemies. Uh, I actually need to take my time and kill them. Because they will... <laughs> They're not friendly. So, and I'll take the time to grab the health refill as well. Because I took so much damage there. That was relatively smooth. I don't like that I had to pick up the health, but it's not a huge deal. Okay. Okay. <sighs> 
So that was the second to final stage, and we still only had that first boss from the beginning of the game. It's uh, <laughs> and it's starting to wear on us. Enemies start to kill you in fewer and fewer hits. I think this guy in red is Dr. Guinness. This is the final dialogue choice. Uh, the question is asking Makin if he will sacrifice himself to save K. I have no idea what that means. I don't know why we have to be sacrificed or what K has to be saved from. But saying yes secures us the sacrifice ending. And that's what we're going for. So K gets put on a helicopter, and I didn't actually notice this until today, but the helicopter pilots put on masks right here. There they are, signifying that they're evil and K has been kidnapped. And then we finally see that is Geist. I think he's telling us that Kay has been kidnapped or something like that. And Ko is very upset about it. Blade Master Kitty, the cool kid. Just sitting there. I have no idea why. At this point, I, <laughs> I only have threads of story. I'm barely hanging on. Okay. So we move all the way back over to Asia for the final stage. The Forbidden City in China. And we get a new character. So, uh, you know how I said Ko was important? That's who we're playing as right now. And you can see he doesn't have Makin, so his sword doesn't have any red markings, and uh, he doesn't have an EX move, he can't charge it up or anything. But you can already see, like, I took a bazooka shot to the face, and you see how minuscule damage it did. Welcome to hell. <laughs> or something like that. I need like the gesture sound clip from DMC3. I, <laughs> I have no idea what this is. Uh, here's another great example of how underpowered we were. So remember these big red enemies. Yeah, uh, he's dead. Granted, Ko is like one of the better characters in the game, but still, it, it puts into perspective how underpowered we were. Yeah, he just, he just decimates them compared with the character we were playing as. So this stage has a lot of waiting for platforms to show up. Unfortunately, but... We get to gaze around at the beautiful hellscape before us.
right here, the invisible wall like shifts twice, <laughs> three times. It pushes you back. I don't know what the deal with that is, but I thought it's funny. Okay, I am going to grab the health here, even though I've only taken minuscule damage, because believe it or not, believe it or not, it can make the difference, and it has made the difference several times in practice. This is the last thing I'm afraid of killing me, and they can just destroy your world if they feel like it. And Ko's hitbox is incredibly poor at actually nailing them. It's not possible, to my knowledge, to crit them with K, or with Ko, sorry. Just because uh, when they're turned around, your sword doesn't reach into their hurt box. Uh, this is incredibly scary. Dreamcast. <laughs> Come on, dude. Okay. <laughs> so scared. <laughs> It's a lot of time loss, but I'm okay. I'm alive. <laughs> and they give you a full health refill. <sighs> Just before heading up into the hyperbolic time chamber. immediately gets bodied, naturally. Anime! And now, as Awakened K, we have the final fight against Geist. Alright, let's go. Nice. That attack where he spins his sword around is the best attack that he can do. It's really easy to see and dodge, and it gives me a bunch of time to just wail on him. That was a quite good first phase. Not the best I've had, but... Uh, I don't know how or why he transforms into this Xenomorph thing, but, you know, bosses need to have multiple phases. Alright. Let's hope I don't suck at ping pong.
Okay. Once you take all those out, he'll actually come down and you can fight him. I'm gonna try and stay as far away from him as possible to bait him into using certain attacks. He only becomes vulnerable after attacking, so... cycle is as good as you can get to my knowledge so well guess we're gonna four cycle that is fine though <laughs> the ten-year-old record has been broken First try. D okay, one second. Alright, Nightbot has been unmodded. Spamming encouraged. didn't work. <laughs> Nightbot has been thwarted. <laughs> Dude, Han going for the global ban. So yeah, that was Machin X. Uh, obviously this run isn't super great, but it's a three minute improvement, so. <laughs> go for sub 50, but not today. Once this gets uh, accepted on to speedrun.com, I'm gonna submit it to, or I'm gonna link it to Easyscape and claim my bounty. And then after that, I might uh, might go for improving the record. I mean, yeah, I normally I uh, stream for much longer than this, but I got the run first try, so. And I don't have any plans for what I might do after this, and I'm kind of eager to uh, to get it rendered and uploaded and everything. <laughs> Y'all are too kind. 
play Fortnite. I don't even have it installed. My computer probably couldn't handle it, knowing my computer. lobby party? Dude, I am down for that. End. Makin. Deus ex machina. 